I just bought something that I got rid of, the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus. And this one was even more expensive than the last time I bought it. I wanted to get this device back in particular for a few different reasons, namely being the large screen. I really liked the design aesthetic and to be honest, I kind of missed it. Just a note as well, the drivers have been fixed on this, so this runs a lot better than it did when I first reviewed it. One thing I've noticed since picking this up again though, is that I'm kind of running out of storage space. So today we're going to do two different things. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the SSD inside and I'm going to show you the one reason that completely destroyed my experience when buying this in the first place. For the upgrade, I decided to go with the Corsair MP600 Mini. This is a very peppy TLC drive with read speeds up to 7000 megabytes per second with reads coming in at 6200 megabytes per second. At the time of making this video, this cost me about 230 Canadian, which is a far cry from the 15 to 1600 Canadian that I spent on the actual handheld. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to install this. I am going to clone my SSD so I don't have to reinstall everything all over again. That's the drive that we're going to be using, but how am I going to be cloning this? For the cloning process, I'm going to be using this charge disk enclosure. This has a mini cooling fan inside and it's really small. Overall, the design looks pretty neat. Charge sent this for me to take a look at. As with all my reviews, the company has not seen this beforehand and all opinions are my own. I'm just going to give you guys my honest thoughts to what I think about it. This is a relatively fast drive enclosure, supporting USB speeds up to USB 3.2. This gives us a total speed of 10 gigabits per second, which would be pretty peppy for these 2230 drives. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave that link down below. It's always nice to have a little storage enclosure on the go too, so this might be nice to take around with me, especially when I go on vacation. The first thing I would recommend doing is to clear out some of the downloads on your device itself. If you have games that you're not playing, it's a good idea to delete them because that's less data to transfer over later. As of making this video, I have about 300 gigabytes left, so I already have lots on this device in particular. I could delete a few games, but I think I'll just leave the ones I have on there. The three big ones that I have on this device are Doom the Dark Ages, which I've already beat, but I do want to play it again. I also have Wukong, which I'm installing to try to finish. I also have the Oblivion Remaster, pretty close to finishing that one too, so I also want to keep that on there. We need to get this new MP600 Mini into this enclosure, so let's open this up, take a quick peek inside. Inside the box, we find a few different things. We have a few thermal pads and the standoff mounts to hold the SSD into place. There's a little instruction book with the enclosure itself, and of course the enclosure. Wow, this thing is so small. To put that into perspective, it fits in the palm of my hand. This is remarkably small. On the back, there's a little fan to keep the SSD cool. Pretty cool little feature. On the other side, there's a lock to lock the actual drive, but I am loving this gunmetal design. One small critique that I'm noticing, it looks like the USB-C port is bent ever so slightly. This just came out of the box too, so that's kind of odd. I don't think this is necessarily a problem and it's so subtle that I barely noticed it. But it is interesting to see nonetheless. Interesting because when I was opening this, I was trying to figure out how to open it without looking at the instruction manual, as you know, as people do. And I noticed this lock is actually just for locking this top plate in place. Make sure to unlock that so you can slide it open. Just pull from the actual side and it should just slide right out. You could probably slide from the glass too, like this pretty easy. Let's go ahead and check out the SSD. This one's kind of nice as well because it comes with a little thermal pad too. I find it fascinating that you can fit two terabytes on something so small. Technology is absolutely incredible. When you're installing this, just make sure to line up that notch with the notch on the actual SSD adapter. You also want to rotate this adapter so you can slide that fully in. If this is rotated around the other way, it's going to hit the top of this SSD and then just flip it around so the SSD locks in the place. Now we're ready to clone the drive. In the bottom of the case, you're going to get a few different accessories. Get a USB 3.2 cable. 
It's relatively short, but it comes in this little acrylic enclosure. And you get an enclosure for the drive as well. I don't know if I'm going to use this, but it is nice to see that it comes with it. I think this is a waterproof enclosure, but don't hold me to that. Basically just a little drop shell in case you're on the go and you drop your SSD. It's got lots of protective rubber around it. This is a nice little accessory to have. All we're going to need to clone the actual drive itself is the software of course and the little M2 adapter plus that new M2. I'm also going to need something for the software to run on too. For the purposes of this video I'm going to be using something called Clonezilla. So you're going to need a USB drive. Oddly enough, I don't even have a USB drive, so I'm going to use my Lexar adapter along with a micro SD card. We need to download the software. The first one we're going to need is Belena Etcher. So go to the main website, I'll leave that link down in the description and go ahead and download that. We're looking for the very top one up here. It's the one for Windows and we want the installer package. Once installed, all we have to do is now download the app that clones the SSD, which is Clonezilla. There's a few different options on the Clonezilla website, so just make sure to get the right one. On the bottom of the actual page, you're going to see Clonezilla Live. This is the one we're going to need to download. So just tap your finger on that. This will bring us to the page for Clonezilla Live. About halfway down the page, you're going to see the download for ISO file for CD or DVD. Tap on the stable download and it's going to show AMD64 and zip file. Change the zip file to ISO, then click download. Now it's downloading the drive image. Once this is done, we need to head back to Belena Etcher. In Belena Etcher, select Flash from File. Head to your downloads and select the Clonezilla Live ISO. Then we just need to select the drive. Then just select Flash. This should only take a second to flash because the live image of Clonezilla is pretty small. Okay, so that is all finished. We need to boot into the BIOS next. I'm going to go over to the boot options menu and for the first boot option it is selecting the disk. You need to change that first boot option to wherever Clonezilla is. For me it's on that Lexar. Select the second boot option as the Windows boot manager. Then just go save and exit and save changes and reset. It should have no issues booting directly into the USB image now. If you got the error message like I did, chances are secure boot is enabled or the drive is encrypted. Searching for encryption in the device settings menu should bring up this option. Just make sure it's unchecked. Unencrypting your drive may take a little while too. So let's head back to the BIOS and disable secure boot. With secure boot off, it boots directly in the Clonezilla. You want this top option, which is the Clonezilla Live VGA 800x600. You also probably want to plug in a keyboard as well. You sure hear that little fan going, but it's doing a great job I think. Select your language and keep the default keyboard layout. Then start Clonezilla. There's a few different options on this menu, so you have to make sure that you select the right one. We're looking for the device disk to disk partition. That's the second option. It's going to say beside it, work directly from a disk or partition to a disk or partition. Press enter. Let's just select the beginner option. We're going to go with this top option here, which is disk to local disk. Now we have to select the source. So make sure you select the correct drive. The default drive in mine is the Kyoxia one terabyte, and that's the second option. It should say NVMe beside it if that's the internal drive. And now we just have to select the destination. This is the two terabyte one that I've plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It is a good idea to also use this auto option. However, since I know my image of Windows is running correctly and there was no issues, I'm just going to choose the top one and it's going to skip the disk check. It's going to ask us how we want to expand the drive. Because this is a bigger disk, we want to expand that partition table proportionally to what we have available. We're going to have to select the second option. We also don't need to copy the log files. When everything's finished, because this might take a while, when everything's finished, I want it to power down. But you can select whatever option you want. It's going to give you one final confirmation, then just press enter to continue. It's going to give you a confirmation. Are you sure you want to overwrite this disk? Because there's nothing on it, I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. It also gives you one more final check just to make sure you're really sure. And because I am, I'm just going to say yes. Now it's going to start the cloning process. This will take a little while depending on how much data you have, which is why we cleared off some of the stuff we weren't using before we did it. 
Just be patient with it, but it does a really good job at cloning your drive one to one. So after the clone is finished, all we have to do now is to put this into the Claw 8. The Claw 8 fortunately is one of the easiest handhelds to get into, and I'll show you why. To get into the Claw, all you need is a standard Phillips screwdriver. Start by removing the screws on the corners. Then once you get the ones off the outside, go ahead and remove the two on the inside. Then you're going to need a plastic pry tool to get it open. Also make sure to remove your micro SD card. You don't want this breaking during the install process. I recommend starting up from the trigger. There's a little bit more space to open it up from here. Then just go down and open the shell. Go very slowly. You don't want to nick the plastic. You're going to hear the clips open one by one. These are pretty easy clips to unlock. Don't forget the clips on the top. The nice thing about the claw is there's no cables attached to the back. The SSD we're replacing is right here, but unfortunately it sits very close to the battery. On the battery, there's four screws that hold it into place. Just be really careful as you're going very close to a battery with a metal screwdriver. You don't want to slip and accidentally puncture the battery. It's nice how easy MSI made it to swap out the battery. The battery comes right out with those four screws removed. To keep this even simpler, I'm not even going to disconnect the battery cable. It is very easy to do, but I've never had an issue with leaving it plugged in. Remove the one screw holding the SSD in place. Keep that one separate because it is a different type of screw. Then just lift up the SSD, kind of wiggle it backwards and it should slide right out. Super easy. The thing I don't like about this is there's some sort of thermal putty underneath the SSD. While this is really good at transferring the heat, you don't want to get this on the pins of your SSD itself. This is designed to wick away heat from the SSD and put it into the motherboard. However, I don't think it's really needed. I am going to put it back though, just in case. Let's grab the new SSD and slide that in. Make sure to put that thermal pad just a little further back. You don't want it getting into these pins. I've set it almost all the way back to where the screw attaches. Then just grab that SSD, slide it in, push it in, you'll hear a little click, and you're good to go. Attach the one screw and then just work in reverse. Slide the battery back into the actual shell and put those screws back in. I'm actually really happy that MSI didn't glue down this battery. It makes swapping it out really easy if you need a replacement in the future. Double check, make sure you got all the screws in, but we should be good to go. Reattaching the backplate is pretty simple. Start up at the top. Push all the clips in the top into place. You'll hear them snap in. Then just go down the side and the bottoms and do the same thing. It's a much easier process than I thought it would be. Let's get the backplate screws in the place and we should be good to go. We do need to go back into the BIOS to re-enable secure boot. But then that's about all there is to it. If you want to access the BIOS on the claw, it's pretty straightforward. Turn it on and immediately press the right trigger and the right bumper. You have to go over to the security tab, go down to secure boot and just re-enable this. Then go to the boot tab and make sure you set the boot option one as the hard drive we just put in. Go over to save and exit and save and reset. With that, you've successfully upgraded the SSD in your claw 8 AI. Now you can add way more games to your backlog. I had about 400 gigabytes free, but now I have 1.23 terabytes. Definitely a lot of space for all my games. As mentioned, I did want to talk about one little setting that has completely changed how I look at the claw. In center M, scroll down to the bottom and click settings. Under general settings, this one option has caused so many issues. If you uncheck this, center M will be very unresponsive and slightly laggy. Even if you have this enabled, all you have to really do is just press the M when it pops up and you're right back to Steam. It hasn't really bothered me, but it's nice to see that this little bug can be fixed by just enabling this as the default start screen. As for the charge little disk enclosure, I think it was really helpful. If you're looking for a way to use your SSD after, this is a really good way to put that one terabyte to use as an external drive. But yeah, that's all there is to it. What do you think of the SSD upgrade? Is it worth it for you with the claw? How do you like the claw so far? I didn't like it at first, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I've kind of shelved my ROG LIX. I miss this big screen. For lighter games too, like Coffee Talk or some other simple titles, the battery life has been phenomenal. If you see the Claw 8 AI Plus on sale, or if you see it locally, I can easily recommend this handheld. I've had a lot of fun with it, 
and it's been coming to work with me every single day lately. One thing that's really interesting is just how efficient this chip is. It's not only efficiency, but you get a really good balance of ergonomics, screen quality, battery life, and of course features. I just hope MSI manages to fix their software eventually because that's the only thing holding this entire handheld back. Benchmarks on this chip in particular come very close to the Z2 Extreme, so I'm curious to see how this one is going to stack up to the A8 when I manage to get my hands on one. But if you have any questions regarding the SSD upgrade or the Claw 8 AI Plus in general, let me know in the comments below. But as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.